You are listening to Pastor Rocco Tissen. For more information about this teaching and others like this, or to share your testimonies and to make contributions, please visit www.hofarlington.org. You can also mail us, Household of Faith Arlington, 5001 New York Avenue, Arlington, Texas, 76018. Thank you and God bless you as you listen. May your name be exalted forever. May your name be glorified in our lives. We bring you our praise and our worship. Let it be acceptable before you. In the name of Jesus. With complete and total humility, we come before you this morning. Have your way in our means. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Please, can we celebrate this kitties? Please, let's celebrate them. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. Hallelujah. Please tell the neighbor you are blessed. Tell another one Jesus loves you. Say to two people, I'm excited about your future. So, so excited about your future. Please celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate Jesus and be seated. Hallelujah. It's, uh, it's just God's blessing to have GTC here this morning. Please let's celebrate the Lord this morning. Sometimes some of us are discouraged, but until you see what God has brought out from you, and you really be encouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so blessed, and I can, I'm wondering what uh, gap we do in March. Uh, maybe there will be a revival in the house. But <laughs> Hallelujah. But we just bless God, who has made all this thing possible by his grace. To him alone be glory in Jesus' name. You're welcome to Household of Faith. We expand the family of Christ by loving God and loving his people. Tell your neighbor, I really love you. I'm not fake. I genuinely love you. <laughs> Maybe we can take a one praise report. Do we have one praise report? You want to tell us what... Uh, someone did that you want the congregation to be encouraged about it, or you want what you have done and you want to encourage others to do, um, and lastly you, yeah, please do come. Or maybe you have a testimony that will make us to close this service and go home. <laughs> four months now, and uh, I want to testify to encourage some people in the house that God still has our prayers. When I came, I didn't know nobody. I was just here, then I cleared this land, because the first time I came, Pastor said, wherever you are, just claim the land. I hold up to that word. And within two months, I was able to close the house, got a job, to the glory of God, my husband is coming to join me next month. Please let's celebrate the Lord. Let's celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. You will possess the land in Jesus' name. I say you will possess the land in Jesus' name. First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. First Chronicles 12, 32. The Bible says, of the tribe of Issachar, men, and this can also be women, who understood the times with knowledge of what Israel should do, 200 chiefs, and all their relatives were at their command, at their command. Just to remind you what I told you week by week, that once you have understanding of times, uh, that you have knowledge of what you are supposed to do. And the third thing is that you will be in command. You will be in command when you understand time. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, just to remind you that we are talking about understanding of time. Understanding of time. In Revelation chapter 4, verse 11, the scripture makes us to understand that uh, as great as our God is, worthy he is, to receive glory and power that he had created all things. For his assistance, he has created all things. For everything to bring glory to his name, he had created them. 
Then I looked at a scripture in Mark chapter 11 from verses 12 to 14. Beautiful scripture of Jesus Christ being hungry. Don't forget that he was still man. You know, Jesus Christ here on earth. So because of that, he was hungry. The Bible says he was hungry and saw a fig tree. And that the fig tree had beautiful leaves. But unfortunately, it was not the season for the fig tree to bring fruit. So Jesus Christ went there, believing that there should be fruit on it. Don't forget, it was not the season for it to bear fruit. And the scripture says, when Jesus got there, there was no fruit on it. He cursed that tree. The tree dried up. May you not go through any cost. May you experience, not experience any cost in the name of Jesus. And I began to meditate on that scripture. Why should Jesus treat that tree that way when it was not a season? And there was something that ministered to me. And a good analogy is someone who have, maybe you have children, and you think you can't serve God now because you have children. And God is saying, this is the time I want you to serve me. You know, all the things we normally believe God should understand. I thought God could have understood that it was not the season for that tree to have fruits. But still, Jesus wasn't happy with the situation. So, and I want to encourage you this morning, you must understand time so that you will know what you are supposed to do and be able to command things that are around you. I've discovered that when you want is not when God wants. And where you know where God wants. And my prayer is that time will not be against you. Yeah. I say time will not be against you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. But I want to say to you this morning that the wrong use of time can lead to regrets. The wrong use of time make people to live a life of regret. Don't forget that. And there are so many people, maybe they are online right now, even you may be here. You are saying, I wish I had done this as a sort time. I wish I had taken this step, but I didn't take this step because the time was wrongly used. When you use time wrongly, it can lead to sin. Uh, a lot of the same people commit is being where they are not supposed to be, or maybe being at the right place at the wrong time. So when you don't use time very well, it can lead you to sin. When you do not carefully use your time, you don't understand time, it can lead to deadly mistakes. Deadly mistakes that people just make a mistake they can't recover from. And I pray over your life this morning. The mistake you will not recover from, it will not be your portion. Amen. The mistake that you have to suffer the consequence all your life, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Amen. And there are such mistakes in life. I'll read Proverbs chapter 7 from verses 4 to 23. Proverbs chapter 7 from verses 4 to 23. I read it from Good News Translation. The word of God says, treat wisdom as your sister and insight as your closest friend. They will keep you away from other men's wives. And this could be other, men, other women's husbands. <laughs> from women with seductive words. It says once, I was looking out the window of my house. And I saw many inexperienced young men. But notice one foolish fellow in particular. May you not be that fellow. Amen. He was walking along the street near the corner where a certain woman lived. He was passing near her house. In the evening, after it was dark, what do you have there at the time? In the evening, after it was dark. And then she met him. She was dressed like a prostitute and was making plans. She was a bold and shameless woman who always walked the streets or stood waiting at a corner, sometimes in the streets, sometimes in the marketplace. She threw her arms around the young man, 
kissed him, looked him straight in the eye and said, I made my offerings today and have the meat from the sacrifices. So I came out looking for you. I wanted to find you and here you are. May the wrong people not find you. It says, I have covered my bed with sheets of colored linen from Egypt. I have perfumed it with myrrh, aloes, and cinnamon. Come on, let's make love all night long. We we'll all be happy in each other's arms. My husband isn't at home. He's on a long trip. He took plenty of money with him and won't be back for two weeks. So she tempted him with her charms. And he gave him to her smooth talk. Suddenly, he was going with her like an us on the way to be slaughtered. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. <laughs> like a deer prancing into a trap where an arrow would pierce his heart, he was like a bird going into a net he did not know that his life was in danger. Of course, you finish the scripture, it says, Now, then, sons, listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let such a woman win your heart. Don't go wandering after her. She has been the ruin of many men and caused the death of too many to count. How I wish that inexperienced man did not go out at the time that he went out. The time he went out. Do you know how you can go to an hotel room and you just realize you begin to go through your television and before you know it, you are watching pornography? The time. Where you are supposed to go with your spouse, you don't go. Before you know it, the person you are not supposed to call, you begin to call them. The time when you are supposed to be sleeping, that you are not sleeping, you are going through the social media, and certain things begin to pop up that you, be, you started to respond to them from. You know how people will just tell you one thing led to another, another thing led. What is that thing that is leading and leading and leading? Just the wrong time, the wrong thing that should be done. When you allow yourself to be caught up in such things, it will lead to sin. The Bible says it will, I mean, in this case, that the man was being led to his grave. You know, sometimes I, 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 I wish people who died can tell us what happened in the last minute before they died. What they should have done that they didn't do. The voice they had that they did not listen to. The step they shouldn't have taken that they had taken by mistake. Christians, time is everything. When you understand time, you will, you will take control of your life. Spiritually, we must understand time. Is this the time I'm supposed to go out? Is this the time I'm supposed to be in? Is this the time I'm supposed to be spending time with the boys? Is it this time that we should go on girls' trip? You have to understand. Because when we don't understand, it can get us into many troubles. Second Samuel chapter 11, from verses 1 to 5. Second Samuel 11, 1 to 5. The Bible says, the following spring, at the time of the year, at the time of the year, when kings usually go to war, David sent out Joab with his officers and the Israelites' army. They defeated the Ammonites and besieged the city of Rabbah. But David himself stayed in Jerusalem. Don't forget, it was the time the king was supposed to go to war. The leader, the general, were sent out. But David decided to stay behind, even though it was the time for him to be there with them. Sometimes it is the time for you to be with the children. It's the time for you to be with your spouse, but you are not there. And the Bible tells us that one day late in the afternoon, 
David got up from his nap. He wasn't supposed to be sleeping at that time. And went to the, to the palace roof. As he walked around up there, he saw a woman taking a bath in her house. In, her, in that woman's house, not in David's house. <laughs> I mean, you may not understand if you live in America and you are saying, ah, how, did she, how did he see the woman that was taking a bath in her house? If you, are, if you live in Africa, you will understand that there are a lot of bathrooms that are not like bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> the, the definition of bathroom it simply means where you put buckets and put water. That's all. <laughs> no, nothing, nothing glamorous. I remember when we went on mission trip in uh, Arusha, uh, in Tanzania. All of us, even our win we, didn't, our, we didn't have windows, and we, we, our bathroom was just stick. They put stick around, then put another stick cross so that you put your wrapper to cover the front. So what we used to do is I would say, Pastor Duny, you go and bath, somebody will stay outside. <laughs> you know, so that everybody is coming, we say, look, somebody is there. <laughs> the same thing with the, with the supposed restroom. So somebody has to be watching while you are there. So if, if, when the scripture says, David saw from the palace, it's not like your own restroom. It's not like your own bathroom. This is the kind we are talking about. So as he walked around there, he saw a woman taking a bath in her house. She was very beautiful. So he sent a messenger to find out who she was. And that messenger didn't say, ah. Why are you asking this? Who this thing is? May the Lord bring the right counselor around you. Yes. And learn that she was Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. They will send messengers to get her. They brought her to him, and he made love to her. She had just finished her monthly ritual of purification. Then she went back home. Afterward, she discovered that she was pregnant and sent a message to David to tell him. You know how some things happen at the wrong time. Pregnancy, why this one? Why should this one be pregnant? Time. But the situation there was, this man wasn't supposed to be there at that time. If she had been in the battle, she would not see Bathsheba. So timing, when you go through the, what, what followed this, it was a generational challenge. It brought in so many disaster consequences on generation after generation because of this one time that he was supposed to be in the battlefront that he was on top of the palace. When I tell you about eternal mistakes, mistakes people don't recover from, Sin that people don't recover from. May that not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Amen. And sometimes it doesn't look like that, especially when you are so close to God. I've realized that the closer you are to God, the more He will take certain things seriously about you. What other people do and get away, you may not be able to get away with. God takes His relationship very seriously. He doesn't joke with his relationship. Because when you are close to him, there are things he does not expect you to do at all. But it's just about timing. Walking in the time, you know, walking when children will tell you, I want to get a job, or will tell children to go and get a job, when they are supposed to go to school, it is the wrong use of time. And it has affected so many children the wrong use of time. They, were, they are supposed to be in school. They are supposed to be going to school full time, but here they are, they are working. Before you know it, it's money, but nothing else. I know that when people go to school, they will work, after school, they can work all their life. So why they rush for work when they are supposed to be 
in school. I've seen a lot of, chi a lot of children paying heavily on that, that they never return to school. Because all they need to do is get a car, buy a car. You may not even be in the picture when they will bring the car home. And unfortunately, once you get a car from the dealership, they won't take it back from you. So because they are working and they feel that they are making some money, they've gotten into a car loan. And before you know it, they can't go back to school. From one debt to another credit card. You know, I, I used to tell my daughter, I said, you need to study hard because there are some of your classmates now. One day you will get to KFC and you want to order from KFC. The same of your classmate will be the one in the window serving you because of the time they have wasted. She came back to me not too long ago and said, Daddy, what you said then? I went to order something and it was my classmate. And I couldn't recognize her again. She said, that's you. I said, what are you doing here? Oh, I, this is where I work. How the use of time can affect life. How the use of time can affect life. Either you like it or not, this use of time has affected so many of us. It has affected so many of us. You know, Sometimes when, when children are supposed to be spending time with their parents, they are spending time with boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> but I, I, some of us were victim of that. Because there are so many things children need to learn from their parents. So many things virtue parents need to pass over to the children. And the children don't want to stay at home. They want to be outside because they want to be free. But then the freedom time comes, but the training and the preparation, the equipping they needed is no longer there. Time for everything, and those time must be taken very seriously. Tell your neighbor, understand your time. <laughs> Say to another person, understand your time. <laughs> you know, our children want to be free. We want to do this, we want to do that. You are going to be free all your life. But there are certain things you enjoy from your parents. It's never going to be there forever. It's never going to be there forever. It's about time. There is a time to be young. And you have to be young. You can't be an adult. Because you're still going to be an adult and you're going to be tired. <laughs> If you ask a lot of adults now and say, what would you prefer? I want to be young again. <laughs> I want to be young again. There was a little, a little girl, they asked one day on TV, what do you want to do when you grow up? He said, I don't want to grow up. <laughs> I don't want to grow up. <laughs> Make the best of your parents when the time is still there. Let them support you as much as they can support you. Let them encourage you as much as they can encourage you. The time will come when you say, I wish my parents are alive. Don't you know that the time will come. The seat we are sitting now, GTC will be the people sitting there. And their own children will be the people that are doing what they are doing now. It's about time. Time. Tell your neighbor you are soon going to get old anyway. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> you know, when you understand time, you will know when not to do two jobs. You know when not to be in school, but to raise your children. Because you can use all the time to raise the children, I mean, to go to school, to do all the jobs and make the money. By the time you are back home, the children are no longer home. As the time you are returning is when they are leaving home. It's the time they are leaving home. 
something about time. There is time for everything. For everything. You can't, you can't be going to school when you are supposed to be parenting. And when you are supposed to go to school, that's when you go and get pregnant. That's when you get pregnant, where you are supposed to be in school. It's, a, it's time. There is time. When you are supposed to be sleeping, you are on social media. It will backfire. Are you still there? Yes. Ephesians chapter 5, from verses 15 to 17. The Bible says, Ephesians 5, 15 to 17. It says, so be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Tell your neighbor, be careful how you live. Yes. Say to another person, be careful how you live. Yes. And that's because so many of us, we are careless with our lifestyle. Very careless. We just, take, we just do anything anyhow. Just do anything as it comes. So careless. He says, don't live like ignorant people. If you are not living like ignorant people, it means you must live with understanding. He said, but like wise people, like wise people, be wise about your time. He said, make good use of every opportunity. There is one definition of time. It says opportunity. Time is opportunity. So you go and look at the original meaning of time. It's opportunity. Every time time comes, opportunity comes. When you miss time, you miss opportunity. It says, make good use of every opportunity. So you can say, make good use of every time you have. Because these are evil days. Don't be fools. Then, but try to find out what the Lord wants you to do. Try. Make effort. Find out. Is this what I should be doing? Is this the right thing for the right time? It may be the right thing, but not for the right time. You have to find out. You have to find out. You are 60 years old, you are, in you are trying to do, you are doing programming in school. Is it the right time? Is it the right time? Programming, 60 year old man, 60 year old woman, you want to do IT. Is it the right time? How come you didn't do IT before now? Ask your neighbor, is it the right time? <laughs> Say we should not be fools. The meaning, the, the meaning of foolishness is doing the right thing at the wrong time, or the wrong thing at the right time. That's foolishness. And we don't fall into that if we understand time. If we understand time. We can't fall into such a mistake. If I look back now, sincerely speaking, what I did when we were starting as in, in ministry, I cannot do it now. I cannot do it now. Some of the sacrifices I made, I can't make it now. It was the time that allowed me to make it. The kind of fasting I fasted, I can't fast it now. When I fasted about 260 days in a year, I can't do it now. It's because there is time for everything. There is time you lay the foundation of your future. That's the time to do it. But when we don't understand time, you do the right thing at the wrong time. Do the right thing at the wrong time. 
But I want to encourage you. You still have time. Tell your neighbor you still have time. Do you know why? How, how I know that you still have time? You are alive. Say so you are still alive. You are still alive. Please understand what are you supposed to do, be doing right now. What are you supposed to be doing right now? Please ask your neighbor, what are you supposed to be doing right now? Some of us, we are complaining, we are murmuring, we are so unhappy, unfulfilled because of wasted time. We are blaming God for it. We are blaming everybody around us. But it was something that you did that has wasted the time. I always do say this. There is no young woman that did not have time when men were, flo- were going all around her. No young woman didn't have the opportunity. That, I mean, it was all about her. Every man wanted her. But this one is black. This one is yellow. This one is too thin. This one is too heavy. This one is it's only two pack. Before you know it, year in, year out, year in. And the same thing with men. Don't think it's only women. The same thing with men. When they have all the opportunity, oh, I want to make more money. There is a time to make money. There is a time to make family. In fact, some people will never be rich without, their, without getting married. There are men that cannot fulfill their potential until they get married. Your prosperity is delayed because you are, you are still single. Until somebody completes you, you'll be incomplete. Yes, sir. Let's, let's go. Woo. I want you to pray for yourself. Some of us have lost time. And by his mercy, we can recover. I say by his mercy, we can recover. Amen. By the mercy of God, we can recover. Amen. We have wasted time. We have misused time. We have lost time. But God gives another chance. I want you to pray for yourself. Lord, everything I have lost to time, I want to recover all of them. In any way, I have not used my time wisely. I come before you this morning for recovery. Pray for your children who don't get it right now. They are doing the wrong thing at the right time. Pray for them. That the Lord will give them wisdom. And I want you to pray for yourself. My time will no longer be wasted. My time will not be misused again. Just pray for yourself today. Lord, give me another chance. Give me another chance to recover. Give me another opportunity. Give me another time. Some of us need to pray. I need more time to live so that I can get all you want me to get. Lord, give me more time to live. I don't want to die young. Give me more time to live. Lord, I need more time. The Bible tells us that Joshua, when he was fighting, he told the sun to stand still, the moon to stand still, because he needed more time. Just ask the Lord, give me more time. I need more time. There are so many things I have missed out on. So many things I still need to do. I I still need to take over some land. I still need to cover some ground. Lord, give me more time. Give me more time. Give me more time. 
Give me more time. Give me more time. I want us to still listen to this prayer. For, for Adam, I mean for Abraham, the Bible says he was, he was having a child at about 99 years old. Even the old Sarah that he said, can my, can this woman, can this woman still have any child? Some people saw her and they said she was very beautiful. There are certain things God work on, work in us from our inside out when he wants to give us time. When God wants to give you time, because he's our creator, our maker, he works on some things from our inside out. And I want you to pray for yourself. Lord, I bring myself before you. Walk on me because I need more time. Walk inside of me. I need more time. Whatever needs to be changed, whatever needs to be renewed, walk in me and walk on me, Holy Spirit. Mary said, this can happen. I've never known any man before. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will Come upon you, Holy Spirit. I invite you, come and re-engineer my wife, my life. Re-engineer my life, Holy Spirit. Re-engineer me from inside out so that I can recover all that I have lost. So that I can still take and, and possess the ground that be, and the land that belongs to me. Holy Spirit, come and do a miracle in my life. Visit me inside out, Holy Spirit. Visit me inside out. Visit me inside out. Visit me inside out. I still want us to pray one prayer. A man of God was sharing with me how he married his wife. That when he was told that that was his wife. He said, never. I'm not attracted to her. I can never marry her. I'm not attracted to her. He said, somebody else came and said, this is suppose we believe this is who God wants you to marry. He said, no, I can't. So he said, finally, he went to pray. And God said, that's your wife. So he told God, I'm not attracted to her. How can he be my wife? He said, the Holy Spirit said, leave that one to me. His attraction, he said, leave attraction to me. He said it was just about one month that his eyes started to follow the lady around. Ah. He said, ah, what is happening to <laughs> these eyes? <laughs> that lo and behold, before within two months, he was thinking about her. Monitor anybody we talk to. <laughs> and he began to say, ah, what has become of me? The Holy Spirit has walked on him. Please ask the Holy Spirit, walk on me, walk on me, walk on me. Because there are so many ground I want to take. Holy Spirit, walk on me. Walk on me, Holy Spirit. Walk from my inside out. Holy Spirit, walk on me. So that I don't see with my own eyes again. I don't do things my own way again. Holy Spirit, come and walk on me. So that it will not be about me, but about you. I have been made to glorify you. I have been made to fulfill your purpose and your plan. Holy Spirit, I pray for your visitation. Re-engineer me so that everything in me about me will be for your glory. Whatever time I have wasted, whatever season I have lost, Holy Spirit, I yield myself completely to you. Come and walk in me, walk through me, walk on me. Let me begin to see what I, I, I was not able to see. Be able to do what I was not able to do. Take steps I couldn't have imagined taking. Holy Spirit, 
we yield to you completely. Let it be unto us according unto your purpose. Let it be unto us according to your plan. As you have ordained it originally, as you have created us at the beginning, here we are. Come and do your wonders in our life. Come and perform your miracles, even from our head to our soul. Make us who we are supposed to be. The time that has been against us, the time that we have messed up, the time we have misused. Help us to recover it, Holy Spirit. By just a move, by just a move, we are asking help us so that all that belongs to us, we can begin to take possession of them, come and do a quick work and a major work in our life. Father, we thank you so much. As we bow our head, you are here right now. You have not given your life to Jesus Christ. If you will raise up your hand where you are, we pray with you. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ? If you can just raise up your hand where you are, we will pray with you. Hallelujah. And if you are really sure you are a child of God, born again, just thank the Lord for your salvation. Just thank God for your salvation. Salvation is something to be thankful for. Father, we thank you we are saved. We are counted among the saints. It's not a small thing. And that has given us all things in godliness. Father, we are grateful for this great privilege and opportunity. Thank you, thank you, and thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Please let us be seated. I want to invite those... Uh... We hope that you have been really blessed by today's word. For more information about this teaching or other teachings by Pastor Ropo Tussin, or to share your testimonies and to make contributions, please visit www.hofarlington.org. You can also reach Household of Faith at 5001 New York Avenue, Arlington, Texas, 76018. Thank you for your support and may God bless you.